All right, let's go over uh, some of these comments and uh, we'll just sort of take it from there. Okay, so true biblical creation Nick says, doesn't this not completely put the thousand year literally rain to bed? Second Peter 3 verse 8, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day, as one day, excuse me. So let's go to Second Peter 3 and let's sort of take a look at the context in which that is being used if you will okay so there's I'll, well let me just say this let's read let's read uh, let's start let's yeah let's just start right here verse 3 okay knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying where is the promise of his coming for since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation all right so it, it's helpful if you take this and apply it to what's going on today very clear this is happening today it was happening then it's still happening today it's going to happen until the end of the world. For this, they are willingly ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Verse 8 But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So this is with the Lord. This is not with us. This is not applicable to other scriptures when it talks about a day when it talks about a thousand years this is th this is not a parallel with any of that as men will do as false teachers will do okay <clears throat> now i could get more into that but i'm, I'm just going to leave that at that in verse 9 the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering to us word not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance all should come from unbelief to belief in the Lord Jesus Christ and have everlasting life but the day of the Lord will come as a thief of, in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in the holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat? Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. All right, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop right there. Certainly encourage you all to read this. It takes five minutes, but I wanna I wanna point out something here and show you some parallels, a couple of parallels. I've already shown you multiple times. Okay. So, let's go.
go here to here in Matthew 24. Perfect. I already had this one up. Great. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. <clears throat> now, it's interesting, isn't it? It says immediately after the tribulation. Man, I could talk an hour about that right there. But immediately after the tribulation the, of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. That parallels right here but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which in the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. This is, look, this, this would be ridiculous to say this is a, oops, is a different event than what we're reading here in Second Peter 3. It's not a different event. It's the same event. All you have to do is connect the dots. And this is a struggle for a, a lot of teachers, I think. <clears throat> Being able to connect the dots from Matthew 24, Second Peter 3, and then let's go to Revelation 20. All right, let's connect some more dots. And once you're able to connect these dots, you're able to see this stuff is a lot simpler and a lot easier to understand than what I had imagined. Now, remember, look, I get it. It's hard to remember stuff. Just remember, in the which the heavens pass away with a great noise, the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Whose face the earth and heaven fled away. And we read in Revelation 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And looking for, the, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day wherein the heavens will be on fire. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. You see the parallels here? It, this is not a standalone prophecy. All right? in, in Revelation 20, in Matthew 24, 2 Peter 3, Mark 13, Luke 21. These are not standalone prophecies. You have to connect the dots in order to understand it. If you don't connect the dots, you're not going to understand it. And of course, in order to understand it, you have to have faith. And you have to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you have to have faith that the Bible that you hold in your hands is from God. Without that, I don't know how you understand anything at all. And for somebody like me, I I, you know, I just have to wonder if you're just making it up, right? So I, let's take a look at some bad examples. Uh, hopefully I made that real easy. <clears throat> Excuse me. I ho hopefully I made that real easy. So basically, <clears throat> the thousand years in Revelation 20 is happening right now. It's a unique time period from the time of baby Jesus to the time of his return when Jesus dwells in us, the Spirit of God the Holy Spirit dwells in us. We abide in Him and He abides in us. There has never been a time period like this before. And there will not be a time period like this after the return of Jesus. Alright, because this world's coming to an end, right? <clears throat> and so this is why it's um, spoken of as a thousand year period very simple all right now people this is interesting because people will say no the thousand years happens after the return of Jesus well there is no return of Jesus here mentioned in Revelation 20 until we get to verse 11 and how are you gonna have a return of Jesus and then he returns again where'd he go he didn't where'd he go then, then to make that claim, you have to say that 
Well, Jesus reigns for a thousand years, and then he stops reigning. I wonder, do people even put any thought into this? Look, I get it. It's a big, long doctrine that people teach. And this is one of them right there. He doesn't get any of his eschatology from the Bible. He gets it from what others have taught. And here's a better picture of what he teaches. All right, so look, I, I, I sub Rob, Robert Breaker. I love him. I think he teaches a lot of good stuff. He's dead wrong on this group goofy stuff. You see the law, the smile, the grace, tribulation, and <clears throat> what does that say, Armageddon? And millennium. Okay, so this doesn't this is not from the Bible at all. This is what other people have taught him. He studied it, probably went to school. Bible college and all that stuff and learned this when he could have just read his Bible and learned from the Bible you see this happening a lot alright so the law so it's sort of based in truth because the law came by Moses and grace and truth came by Jesus Christ Right, so let's see if I can figure out. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So first of all, we had the law, and the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to faith in Christ. And once faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster so we had the law that would lead us to faith and by faith or by grace are you saved through faith not of yourselves it is the gift of God so it's, it's always been about faith then some inexplicable reason he's got the tribulation after the grace and it doesn't, oh, right there, you, you can't hardly see it. He's got the rapture. And then tribulation. And then this is where it gets real goofy. You have tribulation, which I call the, a zombie period. It, and not just tribulation, but the millennium. The whole deal there, that's all zombie. That's zombie stuff. It's not in the Bible. All right, somebody watches too many zombie movies. Maybe back in the day it was Frankenstein movies, and they imagined, hey, let's put this idea of Frankenstein in with the Bible, mix the two, and confuse the heck out of people. I don't know. I really don't know, but this is not in the Bible. That's all I do know. It's very clear. There's no relation between tribulation and the wrath of God, and that's what drives me crazy. Because you see, people, I, I just could not figure them out. And then I realized, when they say tribulation, they're ref they don't mean tribulation, they mean the wrath of God. For whatever reason, they confuse tribulation with the wrath of God. And they must be doing it so that they can... Um, so that they can, uh, you know sort of uh, justify this ridiculous position of of uh, you know well, we're not going to endure tribulation that we're, it's going to be all good times the church is growing and it's the same thing that the Mormons teach the Mormons teach things are getting better and better and you know, all these different dispensations and stuff it's utterly ridiculous in my opinion but you see here it says for then there shall be great tribulation and if that's not enough it says immediately after the tribulation that's when Jesus comes all right hold on so you see there's a trumpet a great sound of a trumpet 
all right this is when the elect are gathered or what Robert Breaker and others call the rapture all right pretty simple so let's go to here let's make it like this in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump so you catch that great sound of a trumpet at the sound at the last trumpet at the last trump for the trumpet shall s sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed so let's let's take a look at another one first Thessalonians 4 I better pull that one up for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God you see the parallel yeah you do don't you that away kitty that away buddy okay and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air so shall we ever be with the Lord this is at the this is parallel this is all the same time so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world all right this and this stuff here zombie world it doesn't exist when Jesus comes we are raptured up but in the world we shall have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world so all throughout the Bible it's made it very simple and very easy to understand that when Jesus comes it is the end of the world. He, they're even asked of the end of the world, right? And then when it, when he come, it's basically telling us that this the all these things we're gonna endure, right? It's gonna be tough. It's gonna get worse and worse. Behold, I have told you before, but the end is not yet, right? But. For the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Because if they were to go on and go on and go on, there would no, it would be so bad nobody would get saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. It's gradually getting worse and worse. So much so that it's, I think it's impossible for the unsaved to see it. If, they, if they're unsaved and they see that, hey, there's big problems in this world, you ought to know this world is coming to an end. And if you know this world's coming to an end, why are you not putting all your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ? Just as Moses led the people out of Egypt, so also is Jesus going to lead us out of this wicked world. All right. So, and then. Uh, yeah, so all this other stuff, the millennium, we're in the millennium. I talked about this yesterday, right? So there's, first of all, you're just straight up lying. With, there's no other way to say it, man. You're lying when you say Jesus Christ reigns a thousand years. It's not here in verse 4. It's not there in verse 6. It says they lived and reign with, with Christ. We live, if, we live and reign with Christ right now. He abides in us, and we in Him. And if you're not reigning with Christ right now, how can you say you're saved? And then, just for clarity, a lot of people always have questions. I've had questions about this. When Satan is loosed, it tells us why he's loosed. The reason why he's loosed, what he does when he is loosed, he gathers together the unsaved at our feet. This goes back to Genesis 3 when it says, uh, Thou shalt bruise his heel, talking to the serpent. It's talking about Jesus Christ is going to stomp on the head 
of the serpent and just and kill the serpent forever so also when Jesus comes back he's going to put an end to all wickedness forever right and then until I make thine enemies thy footstool right same thing and then like what we read in Revelation 3 I will make thee to come and worship before thy feet and or how's that like I'm butchering that real bad let's go let's go to 3 9 I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee those of us that are saved I will make them the unsaved to come and worship before the saved feet and to know that I have loved the saved all right and then of course in Daniel same thing I mean this is all throughout the Bible this is not even you know a one a one-off sort of thing or whatever this is all throughout the Bible many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt when Jesus comes we will be resurrected just like what we read in first Thessalonians 4 many of think remember this many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to everlasting contempt shame and everlasting contempt so if we go to first Thessalonians 4 you remember what we read there For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. First the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be cut up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. All right, it, so this there's not there's not multiple comings of the Lord Jesus Christ there's not multiple dis dispensations where you got a chance to get saved now the end comes and then you got a chance to get saved later then another end comes you get a chance to get saved then and then the end comes no I mean that's ridiculous it's stupid there's coming an end of the world and when the end of the world comes it's the end of the world there is no more death no more sorrow no more zombies no more Frankensteins no more sin at all and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away it's the end of the world and he that sat upon the throne said behold I make all things new that now of course that's Jesus Jesus is God Almighty he's gonna make all things new this completely destroys this idea that there's gonna be dispensation and dispensation and there's gonna be second chances and third chances and fourth chances to get saved no look if you're not saved today you're in big trouble when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven there is no more chance there is no more opportunity to be saved for anybody forever and ever. Only those of us that are saved are saved and we are saved forever. The unsaved are destroyed. All wickedness is destroyed forever. Forever and ever. So the reward for being saved is beyond our understanding 
Oh, uh, there was a verse I was going to share. I can't find it. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Um, where, there, where it says, time no more. And it doesn't matter. All I was going to say, I'm trying to think uh, where that might be, but it doesn't matter. So when it says there is time no more, that's just another reference to the end of the world. There is no more time to be saved. It's the end of of the world. So anyways, uh, that was a great comment there. I just sort of went off on a tangent. So the short story, or long story short, short story long, however you want to look at it, this, uh, the a day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. That's to the Lord. So we might think, oh man, you know what? I really wish Jesus would get here. I'm getting sick and tired of this place. Well, to the Lord, it, it's going to happen soon enough, right? It might, it might, yeah, that's right. But to us, it's, you know, it, to us, it's taken a long time, but to the Lord, it's going to happen quickly. So also, should we take on that concept hey man it's gonna come quickly behold I come quickly right and uh, so I think I've gone on long enough appreciate you glad I found your channel again I remember a few times when I was growing in word that you had that had some disagreements with you but the more you keep in the word and seek the Lord reveals no I don't know it all but what I do know, it's all about the work of our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's about His work, not our work. Great stuff on a thousand years. For a minute I was intrigued and deceived, but never sat right because it's not biblical. It's not in the Bible. This idea of a thousand years of zombies, it's not in the Bible. It's in your, it's in your uh, science fiction books. It's on your Hollywood movies. It's in your TV series. But it's not in the Bible. Yeah, the enemy is throwing everything at us. Just read the Bible, man. Forget about everything. Man, should I just go make one long nutty video? Why not? Here we go. Scott Murrow. I wonder if I could make this quick. Now, he's one of my favorites because he's so ridiculously wrong about everything. It challenges me to pay attention to every single detail right so it's good to have people like this in your life that is um, sort of sideways if you will um, and it, it'll force you to examine every single aspect of what you believe all right let's read what he's Genesis is a lie so can't trust Genesis. I gotta trust Scott Moore, Miro to tell me what the truth is. Earth is much older than four to six thousand years. The moon is a dead sun, one of two that warmed and lit up a much larger area. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. The moon is not a dead sun. Uh, the sun is a living moon. See, there was you know, there used to be two moons, and then an asteroid came down and hit one of the moons, and it ignited the moon, and it burst out into flames, and now we have one of the moons on fire, and when it it's just going to burn up into nothing. And we're in big trouble if another asteroid comes and hits the other moon. And then all of a sudden that it burst into flames. And then we got two suns. And you think global warming's bad now? Whew. Boy, imagine how hot it would be with two suns, huh? It's, so the sun is its a living moon. It's not a dead moon. Alright, so, okay. Wait a second. Hold on. Scratch all that. You know what? Forget about everything 
that Scott says, forget about everything that I just said, just there. Forget about everything that Einstein said. Forget about everything that the heliocentrist, the TV people, your school teachers, forget all that. Let's just take a look at what God says. All right, first of all, God said, let there be light. And there was light, and God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Yeah, it's true. But, here's the problem. There is no sun, and there is no moon. We don't see the sun and the moon until day four and God's you know after three days right and God said let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and then and let them be for signs and for seasons for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth to give light upon the earth don't overlook that that's very important and it was so and God made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night he made the stars also all right so right there on the fourth day god made the sun and the moon essentially he made two lights one great light and one lesser light all right, so forget about what Scott said. Forget about what I said. What I said was more ridiculous than what Scott said. Forget about what Einstein said. Forget about what Reverend Schmitty says. And just focus on in on what the Bible says, right? God forbid, yeah, let God be true, but every man a liar. So I'm going to go back and read this over. This will take 20 minutes to read all that. But I appreciate the comments, Scott. And then I'll either, I'll either respond to that or make another video. When do you think giants existed? Before, when there were two suns, that's when. And some after the two. Yeah. That's, that's just going from ridiculous to extremely ridiculous. Okay. All right, so in, the, in regards to the giants, giants, it's important to know and understand that giants are men. And men have not gone extinct. Now, people are... Are arguably are not as tall as far as I know they're not as tall as they once were you know 12 feet 14 feet whatever 10 feet uh, I mean 10 foot tall person is ridiculously tall we're not seeing that I'm not seeing it anyways so those extremely tall giants are not around like they once were but Again, they're still men. It's not like they've gone extinct. Man, man has not gone extinct. All right, so anyways, I'll end on this one right here. Maybe. It's a shame that these types, they can really draw you in when you're not truly granted an award. I went through my own personal issues with these types, and I'll be honest, these types are more aggravating to me than atheists. Yeah. Yeah, the... Well, at least the atheists are being honest when they say they don't believe in God, right? I mean, we have a lot of people today say they believe in Jesus Christ, but then they reject once saved, always saved. How can you have 100% faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and yet not believe that He saves you? And that's essentially what you're saying if when you reject once saved, always saved. 
you're saying that he doesn't save you he can't save you and that you have to save yourself it puts everything Jesus did in vain anyways now that tell you what that aggravates me gets my my butt burning it really does it lights a fire under my rear end all right I do not frustrate the grace of God if for if righteousness came by the law then Christ is dead in vain think about that man that's spot on buddy once saved always saved is the gospel of Jesus Christ without it it is impossible to have peace peace